Hey guys, welcome to another video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Mike Hansen. I am board certified in internal medicine, pulmonary disease, and critical care medicine. Now, you've probably heard of these new miracle drugs, specifically the new weight loss drugs known as GLP-1 RA, GLP-1 standing for glucagon-like peptide, RA standing for receptor agonist. So I'm talking about semaglutide, aka Ozempic, and also known as Wegovi, and then there's terzepatide, which is also known as Manjaro. These drugs were actually first developed with the idea of improving type 2 diabetes. What most people don't realize is that obesity, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, hypertension, dyslipidemia with high LDL and triglyceride levels, fatty liver disease, all of these things are all part of the same problem. They all develop as a result of insulin resistance. For example, how do you diagnose metabolic syndrome? Well, it's meeting three out of the five criteria. These criteria are central or abdominal obesity measured by waist circumference. So in men, that's a waist more than 40 inches, or for a woman, it's more than 35 inches. Now, another criterion is high triglycerides. So that's gonna be a level of 150 or higher. Um, or if you're taking a medication that's specifically to treat high triglycerides. In the third criteria is a low HDL cholesterol, also known as the good cholesterol, or if you're taking a medication for cholesterol. So if you're a man and you have an HDL cholesterol less than 40, or if you're a woman with an HDL cholesterol less than 50, that would be one of the criteria for metabolic syndrome. Fourth criteria is high blood pressure. So if your blood pressure is more than 130 systolic or more than 85 diastolic, 130 over 85, higher than that, you meet another criteria. The fifth criteria is having a high fasting glucose, meaning a high blood sugar. Specifically, if you're fasting, blood glucose is 100 milligrams per deciliter or more, or if you're taking medication to treat type 2 diabetes. So if it's metformin or glipizide or something like that, or insulin, then you would meet the criteria for metabolic syndrome for that one. So if you have three out of those five that I just mentioned, you meet this criteria. All of these five criteria result from having increased insulin resistance. So what is insulin resistance? You could think of insulin resistance as a spectrum of disease. On one end of the spectrum is zero insulin resistance. People who have zero insulin resistance are very healthy. Then some people have a little bit of insulin resistance and then a little bit more and you get into the pre-diabetes range and then a little bit more and now you're type two diabetes and at the highest level of insulin resistance would be insulin dependent type two diabetes. The more insulin resistance, the less healthy you are and the higher your risk of things like heart attack, stroke, vascular dementia, Alzheimer's disease, fatty liver disease, even cancer, depression, and other diseases. So if you wanna know how insulin resistant you are, it's best to use the HOMAIR score, which is an acronym for Homeostatic Model Assessment of Insulin Resistance. This score is determined based on this formula. It's fasting insulin level, so you fast overnight and then you get blood work in the morning and you check your insulin levels. And that level times your fasting glucose level divided by 22.5. Now just know, that most doctors don't check fasting insulin levels when doing blood work. So this is something that you need to request specifically. Now, the lower the score, the better. But generally speaking, you have optimal insulin sensitivity if your score is less than one. Levels above 1.9 indicate early insulin resistance, while levels above 2.9 indicate significant insulin resistance. Now, if someone is overweight or obese, does that automatically mean they have insulin resistance? Well, 90% of obese people have some degree of insulin resistance. This is because 10% of obese people have something called MHO, which means metabolically healthy obesity, which is due to insulin hypersecretion from the pancreas, and that's what drives the obesity, as opposed to the insulin resistance driving fat deposition in everyone else who is obese. Now, on the flip side, is every thin person metabolically healthy? Not necessarily, because some people have TOFI, which is thin on the outside, fat on the inside, where they have fat being deposited inside, like inside their liver, and they have insulin resistance. So the main reason people have insulin resistance is because they're eating too much processed food, which is to say people not eating enough fiber and eating too much refined carbohydrates and added sugar. Ideally, it's best to consume at least 25 to 30 grams of fiber from real food on a daily basis, 
and no more than 25 grams of added sugar. But guess what these new GLP-1 agonists do? Well, technically terzepatide is the only drug that is both a GLP-1 and a GIP agonist, and that's why it gets the best results. But guess what these drugs do? They mimic GLP-1, and in the case of terzepatide, they mimic the GIP hormone in our body, which means that they decrease insulin resistance. That's why they improve type 2 diabetes. They also delay gastric emptying, meaning that they slow the release of food from our stomach, which means that they help keep you feeling full for longer periods of time. And also, they directly tell the hypothalamus of your brain that you're full. That's where your appetite control center is. So they tell the hypothalamus that you're full, and they also directly tell your fat tissue to start burning that fat. So all of these things are happening at the same time. So then what happens? Well, it's not just weight loss and improving type 2 diabetes. It's improving insulin resistance and everything that goes along with that. In fact, there's multiple studies that have shown that both semaglutide, ozempic, and terzepatide, manjaro, they lower triglycerides, they lower LDL cholesterol levels, they increase the good cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, they improve fatty liver disease, they lower blood pressure, they even reduce CRP levels, meaning they lower inflammation in the body. Of course, it's great if people can improve their insulin sensitivity by eating healthy, by exercising, and by doing intermittent fasting, but some people could really use these medications to help them get over the hump. Now, once you reduce insulin resistance, you reduce your risk of heart attack, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, fatty liver disease, cancer, depression, and many other diseases. In fact, a lot of these people who are taking Ozempic or Wegovy or Manjaro, they're actually significantly improving their PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. And then there's the big question, well, do I need to be on these medications forever? And the answer is, depends. That's a topic that really warrants its own video, which I promise will be coming soon. So hit that bell notification if you want to be notified of when that video comes out. And I'll see you in the next one.